What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dabrunski here. In today's video, I'm going to suggest five very small changes that I think would have a profound impact on patch 2.4. Now I know I sound very greedy making this video because PTR hasn't actually dropped yet, but I do think that overall the changes for PTR, they're absolutely amazing, but these very small changes I think would be easy to implement, I think would shake the meta up even more and I think would be a good thing for the game. So I really wanted to make this video before PTR actually dropped because Hezradar did say in his blog post that they were going to take more feedback after this round of PTR and then implement it before the launch of Ladder. And these five changes are very small, I think, in compared to what other things could be suggested. So it's not a rework of Diablo clone, no endgame mapping system, but five very small add-ons that I think would have a huge impact. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree or would add anything more to this video. And a quick reminder though, before we jump in, just want to let you guys know that I do stream twice a week on Twitch. So if you guys do enjoy my YouTube content, any falls on that platform would be very much appreciated. Got the link for my Twitch channel in the description below. That being said, guys, let's jump in. So the first change that I would like to suggest is Act 3 Mercenaries being able to use Sorcerer's Orbs and Stabs. Now, the reason why I suggest this is because in its current state, there's really only a handful of viable options to use for swords on these mercenaries. So Spirit and a Crystal Sword, Lawbringer, if you want that Sanctuary Aura to just have a little bit of crowd control effect with the Undead, Flag for the low res proc, but I think that's a really poor choice because their AI, they try and stick back, so the chance to cast lower res doesn't go off very often even with a Barbarian, and it goes off even less with an F3 Mercenary, so I think it's a poor choice. And then there is also that crazy, like, you know, six-faceted Crystal Sword for damage, but you lose faster cast rate, res, all that other nice desirable stuff for a caster. So if we could just throw on Oculus or shoot his temper, those are kind of cheaper options. Fathom is a very expensive option, but just think of throwing on a shoot his temper up to plus 20 lightning damage, up to plus 20 fire damage, three to sorcerer skills. They already get the skills from Ormus Robes, faster cast rate. I think it'd be a way of making them a little bit more viable. And in addition to sorcerer's orbs, stabs would be really cool. In particular, being able to use insight and a staff just for meditation or because I do know some content creators really like static field procs or the enchant procs and some of the mercenaries i personally think that the damage is not there but if we could use insight and a staff and then maybe have that enchant proc it might be a cool option for maybe a hammered in as you're teleporting around he might be staticking stuff but that's the first suggestion which i think is relatively simple to implement just allow us to use some different existing weapons on these mercenaries so change number two is very small very minor but i think people that run full inventories of skillers and torch and annie and like to magic find will appreciate Let's allow Kane to again identify items in the Roderick Cube. A lot of people, when they're magic finding, they like to just grab a bunch of items when they do a pit run, throw them in your cube, and then go back to town or the next game, talk to Decker Kane and identify them. Let's allow this ability that we could do in LOD be put back into D2R. Number three, please fix the mana burn bug. It currently zaps like 500 or 600% plus more mana than what it's supposed to. And it can really just stop you dead in your tracks with characters like a whirlwind barbarian and it's i find very frustrating and i do think the upside of fixing mana burn is that energy shield sorceresses would probably become a meta or a staple so i think it would be really cool to see like memory and the offhand with a sorceress to get up to plus nine to energy shield and then maybe like perfect sapphire shakos and the sojs and just frost weave gloves trying to excuse me frost burn gloves silk weave boots to kind of mix the two there uh, oopsies but just trying to stack as much maximum mana as we can and then cast energy shield and then not have your life or your mana pool zapped instantly down to nothing. Now it is true you can run like max vitality, mana, hybrid, energy shield setups, but wouldn't it be cool to have like 400 life, 2000 plus mana, energy shield, but then not have to worry about having your mana pool zapped instantly? Again, I know it's a relatively minor gripe, but I would really like to see this fixed. But I do want to give the devs credit because there was numerous existing and long-standing bugs that they fixed, like the Nightmare Enchant Fire Enchanted bug. Like, they have fixed a ton, but I really want to push to try and get Mana Burn fixed. So for number four, I would like to see the ability to cast Battle Orders and Battle Command when you're in shape-shifting form. I know this is very minor, but it does get very tedious being in shape-shifting form and then casting back to Druid form to buff up, then to go back to shape-shifting form. It would just be cool if we could cast it when we're in Werewolf or Werebear form. Now, I know a lot of people might not have a lot of experience with shapeshifting builds, but I really do think that with based on some of the changes that these builds are really going to stomp. Like they upped mall damage, they made it uninterruptible, 
With the new attack rating breakpoints, again, that's going to require some testing as well. But I have a feeling that some of these slower, harder hitting weapons, like Ethereal Earthshifter with a Zodrun, those will now reach faster breakpoints than what they did before. So I really do think that the shapeshifting is going to be kind of like a sleeper build. So that's something that I would like to see implemented. I know they did mention it in the first round of PTR that they were going to put that in, but they didn't. And then there was no notes of it in the latest patch notes. So please allow us to cast Battle Lords and Battle Command when we're in shapeshifting form. So for the fifth and final change, I would really like to see mages receive a damage synergy bonus from Blood Golem and Fire Golem exclusively. Now the reason why I suggest this is because a lot of people were really looking forward to making a mage skeleton necro like casting lower res and having the mages do massive elemental damage and they were really disappointed with the output. Now I understand the developers kind of cautious approach to a necro because you already have amp damage, you already have corpse explosion, you already have strong skeletons and revives so just making insane mages on top of like clay golem, your curses, it might just make the necro too strong but if you added a damage synergy so that you had to invest 20 hour points into blood golem and then 20 hour points into fire golem to then boost the mage's damage i think that would effectively stop necros from pumping a ton of other points into like skeleton mastery and then all the other skills like corpse explosion to just make a ridiculously powerful character so you would be forced to invest 40 hard points into those two golems that people don't typically use to then boost your mages so that would maybe force you to use those golems and then it would kind of prevent you having just a ridiculously overpowered army so i love the lore and the fantasy behind blood golem and fire golem in a mage skeleton necro army and i think that just adding these damage synergies would be an easy way of sort of forcing players to invest hard points into them maybe make them use them so that they can have a mage necro army but then avoid having a very overpowered necro but that is Basically everything I wanted to cover for this video guys again five very minor changes I think would have a profound impact Let me know in the comment section below if you guys think you agree disagree You think I'm way off way out of touch, but I think these would be awesome But I'm really excited to test PTR and I'm really excited for the future of Diablo 2 resurrected So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did if you could throw a like on it That'd be awesome help spread it through YouTube other than that guys I'll catch you on my next video or live stream Peace out